tenderness and childlike love does not leave us. It gets buried under how we have been acculturated to live otherwise and how we have given complete responsibility for the nature of our reality over to our mind. And our mind was, from the Toltec point of view, the mind was created to use as a tool to navigate, to think, to process, but the mind is not what you use in order to, to set the goals and aspirations, and the mind is not responsible for the choices that the human makes. You are not your mind. If you are your mind, I, I love this line, you know the movie, um, uh, It's a Beautiful Mind, mm -hmm. right? He saw all of those things, heard all those voices in his head, and he saw, he saw forms that represented the voices. Well, if you're the voices in your head, right? All y'all can acknowledge that you have all these voices that talk in your head. Oh, no. Your opinions, your ideas, all the voices talk all the time. If you're the voices, then who's listening? Who's hearing? Do you understand? There's a difference between the voices in your head and the consciousness that's hearing your thoughts. Now an insane person never questions the voices in their head. They just react to them, respond to them. I've been completely nuts. I get it. You know, I've let my, the voices in my head that are going, this is insane. I don't believe this bullshit. I'm leaving. Well, the voices in my head will say something like that, but it's kind of like, yeah, okay, thank you for sharing. <laughs> I have a choice and a responsibility to how I respond to those voices in my head. Most humans have not been offered the opportunity to see how they're living in reaction to the voices in their own head first, rather than allowing there to be a space and really considering the nature of, of why we're doing what we're doing. You know, the saying, there's the saying that our kingdom, well, Jesus said my kingdom's not of this world. I believe what he said was our kingdom's not of this world. You know, well, we're... It's kind of like this world we have created. We humans have created this entire, I call it a matrix. We've created all these cultures. We've created all these religions. We made it up. Humans made it up. Mm -hmm. You know, humans wrote the Bible. Humans wrote the Bhagavad Gita. They're interpretations of experience. And I think that's cool. That's, you know, that's interesting. It's neat. But literally, we made this reality up. It exists as it does today because we get up and we show up every day. Right? The humans, we get up on automatic pilot and we do it because that's what we believe and we keep doing it and keep doing it and in the, in the world, the human reality keeps moving forward and it keeps operating the way it operates. But the truth is, we have come to live as though we are slaves to the belief systems out here when we made up the belief systems. We are more important than the beliefs. We are greater than the cultures. We are sacred. We human beings are sacred. We're a direct expression of whatever it is that created us. Okay? And there's an innate integrity, and this is very Toltec, there's an innate integrity of what we really are. But how many people are really living and expressing and living from the innate integrity of who they are as opposed to living from what they've been taught to believe and, and what they have to do in order to fit in and be a happy, productive member of society, if you use a... Did you see? Because we're desperate to fit in. We're desperate to have a community because as cultures have evolved, we've moved away from being tribal. We've moved away from being communal to a large degree. We don't live in really clear relationship with one another. We live in relationship with the world first and then the people second. We live in relationship with our beliefs first and then each other second. And so we've really kind of, it's like, what are we valuing and why are we valuing it? And how well is it really working? Because if we all stayed home one day, if this entire planet, if every human on this planet stayed home for a week, mm -hmm. the entire system would completely collapse. Because it's not real in the sense that we are real. It's virtual. Mm -hmm. And it's dependent on us for its own existence. But we live like slaves to the system. Because we're terrified that if we break rank with the system, there's retribution. Yeah. And I, the truth is, I don't know what Conscious Nashville is going to end up being. Um, I just believe that there's a, a true sense of wanting community by a lot of people these days. And so we're, we're in a process of recreating our culture and how our culture functions. Paul, all of, all of our good intentions, it has to come back to us as individuals and every choice that we're making individually from one moment to the next and one day to the next about the quality of the life that we are creating as individuals. And it comes back to very foundational, simple things 
like the food we eat. You know, the, the, if the quality of the food, we aren't going to take care of this planet until we've started taking care of our own physical bodies. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen. There is no... There is no no longer poisoning and destroying and wrecking the planet as long as we eat all this processed, chemical-laced, um, corporately manufactured mass food stuff, which absolutely, for a fact, study after study, is proven it makes us sick. It makes the human body sick to eat all of this, to eat what we call food in our culture. But um, you start talking to people about changing their diet, <laughs> you may as well be stealing their babies. <laughs> I mean, they'll lynch you, you know, but it's very, really the change has to begin one person at a time, one choice at a time, mm -hmm. one day at a time. I don't know, I can't, I, I don't have any solutions or answers other than what I know from my personal experience is that when you need to change the life that you're living, those changes, if they're going to be real, those changes come from the very fundamental basics of your existence. So you have to change yourself from the bottom up and the inside out. If you try and change yourself just from the top down, it doesn't work. And that's, uh, I believe that's what's going on here is, is, for instance, in the U.S., we culturally keep thinking if we elect a different president, then the country's going to get lined out. The problem is not at the top. The problem's at the bottom. Mm -hmm. The problem is with us here at home in our day-to-day -day lives, you know, and the realities that we're living as individuals in this culture. That's where the problem starts. And uh, until we take responsibility for our lives on that basic fundamental level, um, all of this endless jargon and back and forth at the top is, is just going to continue to be entertainment and smoke and mirrors. It's not going anywhere. So thank you, Lee, so much. And it's been a pleasure to speak with you. And it's really cool to get to, in a way, introduce you on a, on a, in a different way to the community that you've really conceptualize and, and have put forth, which is Conscious Nashville. So appreciate the opportunity to spend this time with you. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks, Deborah. Um, I live with the experience. I'm not interested in reading books. Um, I was interested in reading the books, and then I realized that, that there's a whole lot more to the, to, in the experience than there is in the book. So go live the experience. That's how I do it.